for those that maybe are going through the same mindset, they're not sure they've just finished either high school or maybe they've done personal training for a few years and they're interested in physio, um, but they're also interested in the, in the physical preparation side. Um, how did you sort of seek those mentors and those people that had experience for one and, and, and how did you come to that decision to, to choose that path of, of strength and conditioning? Yeah, I think ultimately it was probably due to just practical experience. Um, I was really proactive from the outset. I always had the ambition and drive to work in elite sport and yep. it is, I guess as challenging and as ruthless as the industry has been, I was always really adamant that that was what I wanted to do. I was passionate about it. Um, the more people I met along the way, mate, they really facilitated my growth and my development, but allowed me to develop a pretty diverse skill set, which fortunately it probably highlighted where I was more suited to with respect to the physiotherapy side or the S&C side. And you mentioned Collingwood Football Club while you're doing your degree. How did you set up that experience? Yeah, I was really proactive from the outset. Um, I was fortunate enough through VU to actually have a, I guess, have an interview with Marty Gervin who came and presented to us. But I wanted to reach out early to him and, and try and acknowledge that, you know, this was my ambition, this was my passion. Is there any opportunities with Collingwood Footy Club? And he recommended that I, I just apply for an internship there, um, which I did straight away. And fortunately, they gave me the opportunity and, one thing led to another. It went on to a part-time role, and then, um, fortunately, I was there for a couple of years, learning off some some really reputable people in Dean, who you um, interviewed previously, but also a few others like Benny Shippard and guys who still remain there today. And you mentioned mentors and influencers uh, who spring to mind into some, of some guys that have helped shape your career and help you get to uh, all that you've done today. Yeah, I think there's a multitude of them, Jack. Um, the guys like Alex Moore, John Siegel, Daniel Jones, Dan Meehan, as well as my immediate colleagues. So, you know, Josh Humphreys, Tanya Gallo, Dave Sobey and the likes of. So they, all of those epitomise everything I could have ever wanted in not only mentors but colleagues. I think they were very driven, very humble, Um <laughs> empowered me to do my role but also complemented my role so gave me the confidence that I could have some autonomy over the role but align it with the vision and the values of the team so they've been brilliant for me along the way and and people who I've stayed in touch with literally every day in my life so the rehab role um, you know, like you mentioned the rehab coordinator role for someone who's not aware on on how that works within an AFL program um, who are your sort of who are sort of your key relationships within the program and and what sort of like a what are I guess your key pillars um, for for the rehab coordinator role yeah so I think every club or every organization approaches it slightly differently for mine having a, a really close relationship with not only the medical team but also the performance team but with respect yep. to certain individuals definitely your rehab physio um, so, I mean, daily, the communication is paramount there, but also the docs just for their input around pathology. What are some ways that you can build resilience for, for developing footballers that are listening in that aren't quite in the AFL system yet? Um, what are some successful methods that you've seen work or that you implement with your uh, training philosophy? Yeah, I'm, I'm big on collaboration, camaraderie and relationships. I think that identifying a few guys within the system, particularly a few of our leaders at the club, and trying to have them nearly mentor some of the younger guys. Um, yeah. A lot of the younger guys are, again, overwhelmed when they get into the system just because of this influx of information. But they're also really enthusiastic and, and driven because they do want to succeed. Everyone wants to succeed. Um, but looking to your mentors, having a good culture surrounding them, I think particularly from the experienced senior guys, if you can pair them up together and show or demonstrate how they go about their training, the utilisation of resources, whether that be massage, physio, ice bars, recovery modalities, anything, I think adopting their approach and their mindset is, is a way that I've gone about it in the past where we can pair up one of the senior guys with those younger boys coming through the system. Uh, what about this one? Favorite inspirational quote or life motto? Yeah, that's a 
That's an interesting one. I actually just read, I've got it on my phone now, believe it or not, is one by Kobe Bryant. I might actually grab it. Is yep. The biggest mistake we make in life is thinking we have time. And I think it's so pertinent to the, the world that we live in right now. I think that there's undoubtedly a lot of people who wish that they'd travelled or had done X, Y and Z before COVID because the world's going to be drastically different moving forward. But for mine, I think that, that it really resonates with me because, and particularly where I'm going in my career, because I'd rather look back and go, I made the most of every opportunity rather than second guess myself. So that's a really pertinent quote for me at the moment. 